The reciprocal family is one type of function we're going to be studying during this unit. The other is rational functions in their graphs. So rational functions are anything that can be written in the following form. And that is f of x equals p of x divided by q of x, where both p of x and q of x are polynomial functions. Now our domain is going to be all real numbers except any place where q of x is equal to zero. Any time that q of x equals zero, we're going to have some form of what is called discontinuity in our graph. So if we have a linear on our numerator and a linear on our denominator, we're going to have some sort of break in the graph. Now, how do we find these points of discontinuity? Let's take a look at that. Discontinuity comes in two different types. We have removable discontinuity and non-removable discontinuity. Removable discontinuity means that there is simply a hole in the graph. Now what this would look like is if we have a basic grid, we have a line that comes along and there's simply a place that has been removed out of our graph and then it continues along. So removable discontinuity, an example of this, would be if we had f of x equal to x squared plus 7x plus 12 all divided by x plus 3. Now, hopefully you're able to see that if our denominator, x is ever equal to negative 3, we end up with a place where we're dividing by 0. But it also with this, if we went f of negative 3, we end up with 9 minus 21 plus 12 divided by negative 3 plus 3. And we actually end up with 0 divided by 0. Since both numerator and denominator are zero, this isn't going to be an asymptote like what we found in our um, reciprocal family, but it's going to be a hole in the graph. This is going to look and behave just like a linear function with one single point removed at x equals negative three. Now, non-removable, are more of our asymptote types. So you can have graphs that come down, resume, and then come out again and have a series of breaks. So non-removable is where we don't simply have a single point gone, but we have a complete split in our graph. So an example here would be if g of x equaled 3 divided by x plus 4. If we went with g of negative 4, we'd end up with 3 divided by negative 4 plus 4, which is 3 divided by 0. And we have an undefined value. But it's an undefined where only the denominator causes the problem, not the numerator. So we have a discontinuity. Now the graph here does not match the function that was given, but it is a way of locating forms of non-removable discontinuity. Vertical asymptotes are going to occur when q of x equals zero and p of that same x value does not. Aside from vertical asymptotes, there are other types of asymptotes that we need to keep in mind when trying to structure rational functions and their graphs. So other asymptotes come in three ways. And with this, we're going to be talking about the degree of a function. Now the degree of a function is the highest exponents associated with the variable being used. This term and its coefficient control the end behavior of our function and graph. 
as you may recall from our fifth unit on polynomials and polynomial functions end behavior ends up coming out only where we have the extreme values if I had a basic function such as f of x equals 7x to the fifth plus 3x cubed minus 2x plus 1. If we got out to really extreme values such as x equaling a million or x equaling a billion, the only thing that's really going to make a major difference in the flow of this function is this lead term. So the 7x to the fifth. If I talk about the degree of the function f of x, it's going to be a fifth degree because that is the highest exponent shown and associated in this. So as we talk here, look for the degrees. Now, in, so, in, in saying this, we have to look at three situations. Situation one, the degree of p of x is going to be less than the degree of q of x. Now what that might look like is if we have f of x equaling 2 divided by x plus 4. This is going to give us a horizontal asymptote at the value y equals 0. Second situation, what happens if the degree of p of x is equal to the degree of q of x? An example would be if f of x equals x plus 4 divided by x plus 15. Well, this will result in a horizontal asymptote at the value y equals a over b, where a and b are the lead coefficients of our function. So in the case shown here, we have 1 x plus 4 divided by 1 x plus 15. So our horizontal asymptote will occur at the fraction 1 divided by 1, which is simply 1. So this will be moved up on our y-axis, but it will still be a horizontal asymptote. Our third situation is when the degree of p of x is greater than the degree of q of x. This will create a special situation. Let me show you what one of these would look like. So if f of x equals x squared plus 2 divided by x minus 1. So we're going to have what is known here as a an oblique asymptote and oblique means that it doesn't follow a perfectly vertical nor horizontal line. Oblique asymptotes can look like a linear function, they can look like quadratic, they can look like cubic. It's going to depend greatly on how far the separation is because in the example given here we have x squared divided by x if we simplify that, we're going to get simply another x, which causes a linear type asymptote. And there will be a brief lesson of a concept byte following this one that will talk about how to find the exact values of those uh, oblique asymptotes. So at this point, just understand there's going to be some other type. Now, how can we identify some of these? Let's take a look. If we have f of x equals negative 2x plus 6 divided by x minus 5, let's go through and find the different types of asymptotes as best we can. 
So because the degree of our numerator is 1 and the degree of our denominator is 1, our degrees are equal. What this results in is we have negative 2x divided by x. We just take our lead coefficients, our lead terms. The x's are going to simplify out, so we end up with a horizontal asymptote at the value of y equals negative 2 divided by 1, or simply negative 2. And we're going to have a vertical asymptote on this function at x equals 5, because that's what will make our numerator, or, sorry, our denominator 0, but not our numerator. Next, g of x. g of x equals x squared plus 3x, I'm sorry, plus 2x minus 3, all divided by x minus 2. So, looking again, numerator has a degree of 2, denominator has a degree of 1, so the numerator is larger. This is going to result in x to the second divided by x to the first, which comes out in a simplified form of 2 divided by one, uh, 2 minus 1 is 2, so we have y equals x plus some b value, which like I said is going to be spoken of in a brief lesson following this one, and we have an oblique asymptote. Now, since we haven't seen those before, a quick sketch of what an oblique asymptote looks like. We come along like this. We're going to have a graph with a vertical asymptote at 2. And then some sort of oblique asymptote at y equals x plus another value. And we will actually have a graph that traces out a pattern like this. And we will get more exposure to building those. But the most important part of building these types of functions is finding the asymptotes and having that become a frame for the rest of it to hang across. Next, h of x. h of x is x squared, sorry, x minus 1 divided by x squared plus 4x plus 4. So looking at our lead terms, we have x to the first divided by x squared. Our denominator is larger, so that automatically results in y equals 0 being a horizontal asymptote. And we're going to have vertical asymptotes. If we were to factor this denominator real quick, we get x plus 2 squared. So we will have a single vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, because that is what will make the denominator 0, but not the numerator. So finding the asymptotes and creating the structure around what the rational functions, their graphs will hang, is very important and will be used as we move forward for simplifying more complex fractions and being able to solve equations involving these. So make sure you understand these ideas and how they came about and be ready to use them moving forward.